Good, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tony Craythorn. I'm CEO of Bamboo Systems. I'm joined with James Peck, who's one, who's one of our selling, senior solutions consultants. And we'll be, we'll be talking in this presentation a little bit more about uh, some of the customers that Bamboo um, have, have, have won and are using our system. And then some of the workloads and, uh, that, um, that Bamboo Systems are being useful within those customers. So, so just to give you just give you a snapshot at um, some of the customers. I have had to, had to cover some of the um, some of the logos, unfortunately. But um, you know, we talked about in the previous video that it's been quite staggering the the, the some of the logos that have come and, and found bamboo um, that are looking looking at ARM as a viable option within their data center. So I'm I'm just calling out a few of them here. So a a, a top five oil and gas company. They have two divisions. One is their general data center for with all, with all the general applications, and the other one is uh, is their exploration division, where they do a lot of work on geoseismic data sets. And they they've purchased multiple um, bamboo servers because they are under legislation by the uh, Saudi government to uh, to reduce their carbon footprint. And they 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 actually did an analysis, and even with virtualization. They were, they were only using about 60% of their Intel capacity at any one point. So they're, 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 they're looking at uh, bamboo servers as a viable way to, to reduce their power and cooling and CO2 footprint um, while, while looking at a more efficient way of running some of, some of those applications. Um, Oxford Nano Core, they're one of, one of the world's largest um, genomic sequencing firms. And they, they developed a uh, new platform called Minion, which is a desktop sequencer. Um, and they, they were developing all of their code for that on x86 and, uh, and then were compiling it across to ARM to then to the, um, to the, to the appliance. So they, they, they wanted a different way of doing it. They wanted to actually develop the software, compile it and, and get it ready and then transfer it on an ARM platform. So it's a, that one's a case for us. Um, we've got a couple of a few universities that are customers, but um, you know Glasgow University is a really good one. They, they purchased a system to uh, to test and try out to run one of their education platforms. So so that got installed recently. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then and then in South Asia, especially in India, we're, we're getting a lot of opportunity. So a firm called Zenexium are one of the world's largest. Well, they, they are, I think they are India's largest distributor. So they've um, they're, they're they're launching bamboo within the Indian market and across South Asia. And they um, and they they purchased the system for them to 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 get to know so that they can take it to market. Um, a slightly different use case in the next one, ART are a, a military contractor and they, they build military systems for aircraft, tanks, etc. And so they, they, they don't want to use an entire bamboo server. What they're, what they're actually doing is they're taking one of our blades and if you remember, each one of our blades has four servers on it and, and they're, build, they're building it into a ruggedized chassis for, for US aircraft, military aircraft, tanks, etc., etc. And, and in those environments, they're obviously short on space, short on power. So, so uh, you know, the bamboo blade um, is potentially a, a fantastic solution solution for them. And then there's a little company called Arm down here. Go figure. They, uh, they, they, you know, Arm, you know, the, the largest chip manufacturer in the world, but um, but they they want to use an Arm server, and they use an x86. So, so they just recently bought one of our servers again to to test it and try it and look at look at the workloads that they can run within their, within their own data center. And then this last one is um, they're a, a software, an AI, AI software company. And they actually use um, AWS's Graviton uh, instance, ARM instance, but, but they, want to, they want to transition from a 100% cloud to, to a hybrid cloud. So they actually want to bring some of those workloads back on premises and then move them back up to the cloud and, and work between the two. So, so they've purchased a, a few of our systems now to, to do that um, because they see us as the only viable solution. So, so with that, I'll hand over to James Peck who can talk a little bit more about you know, where we fit against Dell and some of the use cases. So James. Excellent, thank you very much, Tony. So I just wanna go into a little bit about why we're seeing such interest and traction in the bamboo technology around some of these enterprise data center environments and why we're seeing this in a lot of the customers we just talked about there uh, in the previous slide. So what we see in general around the x86 market in the data center space is really a, a lack of innovation a status quo, which has been there for quite some time. We continue to use one, two use servers and we continue to use them 
in much the same way along as we did with a lot of our legacy applications. So we see a lack of innovation, especially around the port types, the, the, the actual design of those servers and around the complexity involved in that, which is generally derived and focused a lot around high frequency single core applications for a lot of those legacy type software packages. If we couple that as well with what we see from Intel struggling to go beyond the 10 nanometer uh, fabrication process, we're seeing a very inefficient, very power hungry server, which is sitting in the data center causing people significant power problems and cooling problems, and really starting to restrict the scale of many of these data centers as well. So again, that 10, 10 nanometer uh, production process is really limiting the scale, both in terms of core count and in terms of power density across the CPU and across the data center server. What we're essentially seeing is, if we want to go to a, a good scale of server architecture, when we're starting to look at scale and starting to, to deploy our applications across multiple servers, across a, a wide scale of data center infrastructure. We've done a little comparison here. So we're starting to look at roughly a similar performance profile of what we see here from a big incumbent server manufacturer. We'll be honest here, this is a, a Dell comparison we're looking at here. What we're seeing is to get a good scale, we're needing about 16 U of Rackspace across those one U server platforms. And Rackspace is one element we need to look at when we're thinking about our data center design, but it's not always the most important. The second metric down there is where we're seeing the problem for a lot of our customers. So 14.6 kilowatts of peak power, when I'm hitting these systems with a strong uh, performance intensive workload, that is a huge amount of, of power to be consuming for those 896 cores. If we think about that, then in terms of the cost, x86 has always commanded a premium in terms of those CPU, uh, those CPUs coming into the data center design. We're looking at Intel Xeon-based Skylake CPUs in this comparison, and they are very, very, uh, let's say, highly priced. Uh, when we look at the fabrication process, that's where the high price comes from. So we're seeing a very high price for that stack in terms of the initial purchase cost. But coming back to power utilization, 14.6 kilowatts of power utilization does not come cheap. So if we think about that over a three-year period, we're talking about $135,000 to run that stack of technology over three years. And that comes from the, the CPUs themselves, in this case, a pair of CPUs in each one u platform, running at 205 watts of TDP. So 205 watts TDP package is very significant in terms of the amount of power those CPUs consume. They are complex CISC-based processes which consume high, uh, a high amount of power to derive those high frequencies we see inside the CPU package, and that leads to about a 7.3 watt per core ratio. So coming down to that final metric, power is one element, but power obviously has a direct correlation there out to heat and obviously carbon emissions as well. And carbon is becoming a bigger and bigger element to a lot of data centers and to a lot of customers we're speaking to who are really being forced and pushed towards a carbon neutral data center. So let's take a look at the, as we go through the slide here, how that compares to our bamboo technology with some of our innovative modular design based on ARM and RISC-based CPUs. So first of all, the bamboo effect here of having a modular dense design allows us to drastically shrink the footprint in terms of U and rack space. So we go down to about 50% rack space for actually a slightly higher core count than what we're seeing there on the, on the x86 side. Again, rack space is important to some customers, but is not generally seen as the biggest factor when we're looking at buying decisions. The second figure down there is the big, big impact. And it really has been, de been described by a lot of our customers as a true paradigm shift in their compute platforms across their multi-million dollar data centers. So when we're looking at going down to 3.8 kilowatts of per peak performance or peak power on a very strong computational workload, we're talking about a 74 to 75% reduction in power utilization. Now, that obviously has a direct correlation in terms of heat output and in terms of cost. So going down from $135,000 to run this stack of technology over three years down to $35,000. Again, that's where that paradigm shift comes in, not only in terms of power utilization, being able to utilize or add more IT infrastructure into our existing data centers, but also in terms of the ongoing cost of those data centers. Again, an ARM-based uh, CPU technology or an ARM-based server has an added impact of being cheaper because the fabrication process is generally simpler 
and ARM-based processors are generally cheaper in the marketplace. So we're seeing about a 58% reduction in CapEx initial cost of that platform as well. So going down through a few of the final elements here in the slide, again, a lot of this power reduction, power saving comes from a lower TDP package on the CPU itself. So the ARM-based processors we are utilizing within the Bamboo service here run at a 30-watt TDP power window. So we're talking 85% lower than what we're seeing over something like an x86 platform. Those CPUs are simpler by design. They're faster in terms of innovation from what we see from ARM and the innovation from that company. And they are essentially deriving or producing far less heat into the data center, which correlates again into CO2. So when we're looking at a 74% drop in CO2, that gives a lot of our customers the ability to start to achieve or start to meet some of those CO2 emission um, constraints within their data center and take some a significant portion of the way they need to go in terms of a net zero carbon data center, which is a big push for a lot of the larger organizations we're coming across today. So all of this relates around the hardware and the infrastructure and what that means to a customer. And let's think about the ecosystem. So what are we actually going to run on some of that hardware and how are we going to utilize that hardware in terms of our application footprint, in terms of our operating systems, and in terms of the different, the, the different workloads we are able to run on the platform? Well, there's a common misconception that an ARM-based or a RISC-based processor is limited in terms of what we can run. Whilst that is in some ways true versus x86, we see that the ARM64, ARCH64-based ecosystem is expanding at a dramatic rate. Now, this is not just down to companies like Bamboo Systems, it's also down to what AWS is bringing to the, to the party in terms of Graviton and Graviton2. Now, a lot of developers can go along to AWS, they can spin up a Graviton instance or a Graviton2 instance at about a 40% lower cost versus a standard EC2 instance. So that's leading to rapid development of many applications natively on ARM64 or ARCH64 um, architectures. And we can see that, especially when we look at things like containerization and modern workloads. So a little note there, what we're seeing on Docker Hub, if we go to Docker Hub today, is about 121,000 Docker Hub images ready to go off the shelf, which we can deploy on an ARM64 base on a bamboo system out of the box with no need to recompile, with no extra legwork versus what we'd seen in x86. To give you a little flavor, if we went back about two years and looked at Docker Hub and did exactly the same search, we'd see somewhere between two and 5,000 Docker Hub images. So you can see the speed at which this ecosystem is growing. ARM is also obviously prolific at the edge. So a lot of our customers, we talked about, uh, Tony talked about one there earlier in the genetic sequencing uh, market. We see their edge devices, their handheld genetic sequences are all based on ARM. We're seeing the same, same in most automobiles these days and especially around self-driving cars. So all of that edge device is built on ARM. So when we think about how do we develop that software, how do we work with that software, it simply makes sense to bring a lot of that ARM technology into the data center so we can be ARM at the edge and ARM in the, in the center as well. Finally, there's very strong operating system support across most Linux distributions around ARM and ARCH64. So really the message here is where ARM was traditionally very, very strong in open source, it really has moved beyond open source. And we're seeing a lot of larger organizations compiling their code directly for ARM64 and packages are being available off the shelf. So let's think about that in terms of overall workloads and the, the areas where the bamboo solution and our modular workloads really start to shine. So we've had a lot of conversation in the previous video about Kubernetes. So when we're talking about application modernization and app containerization, that fits very, very nicely into a modular ARM-based design where I can be using elastic scaling policies to work over all of our modular resources in the ARM-based platform or in the Bamboo server. We've got up to 128 cores in a 1U platform. That allows us a huge amount of core count to scale our Docker applications, to scale our Kubernetes workloads, and it allows us to start to utilize multiple compute instances and allows us to start to balance the workloads over those multiple compute node instances within our one new chassis. So we work with Docker Kubernetes, we're working very heavily right now with D2IQ, as well as Rancher and also Singularity in the more HPC type workloads and in the uh, education space. There is obviously a lot of the traditional PaaS applications, Linux-based and open source, whether it be databases, Nginx, load balancers, all of those open source traditional applications are 
uh, available in ARM and ARCH64 packages. And with the way that Bamboo works uh, with a Cortex Design CPU, there is no need to recompile or to compile any further than a standard ARM or ARCH64 package, which is available from a lot of those organizations today. And we'll finalize there with a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in AI and ML applications from anything around uh, Elasticsearch, TensorFlow, Hadoop, and Apache Spark. So really clusterized applications which have the ability to scale over our multiple compute modules. So how, how are we as Bamboo helping expand that ecosystem even further? Well, we do a lot of compatibility and performance testing with a lot of our customers and prospects. So what we see from a lot of customers is, is a conversation about, is my application going to work and is it going to perform on an ARM64 basis? And if it is, does that give me an advantage over my competitors and does that give me something innovative for my data center platform today? So with a lot of those customers, they're bringing in-house developed applications. So a lot of those applications are designed and built across a multitude of different programming languages. But the great news here for, for us at Bamboo is we've so far been able to take any one of those applications, recompile them on, onto our platform, and have them running in anything from 5 to 30 minutes. And that's using standard GCC compilers, or where we need a little bit of optimization, we then look to our friends there at ARM to utilize their ARM compiler with some of those bespoke performance libraries to really start to tweak and get the maximum out of our, uh, out of our CPU and out of our um, server architecture. So what we've seen is applications, anything ranging from Rust to Go, Fortran, C++, Java, Python, and beyond. So the great news here is the ecosystem is very vibrant in terms of what we have there for ARM and Bamboo, but it's ever growing with the work we're doing with a lot of our partners and a lot of our customers. And again, it's ranging across a multitude of different sectors who have this interest in ARM64 from anything from Formula One high performance race teams to geoseismic data processing, life sciences, defense, video streaming, and beyond. So the interest is there and the ecosystem is vibrant and ever expanding. And let's take one of the major misconceptions which we have when we talk to our customers. And that major misconception is, well, ARM and ARM-based servers, are they going to be able to perform for my application? I've been used to working with x86 for many, many years. It's a change. It's a difference. Are we going to be able to derive performance? And what we see from a lot of traditional thinking uh, IT professionals is a one-dimensional view of performance. And that is, how fast can I go generally on a particular core or a single thread what kind of performance can I derive? And that really is the wrong way of thinking about performance. And that's starting to change as people start to hit limitations around power and cooling in the data center. People are slowly starting to realize that absolutely they need to start thinking about performance in a different way around looking at performance in a multidimensional view. So not just performance in a single core, not just performance on a single server, but really looking at performance per watt and how do I derive performance in a more efficient way? So the testing we're looking at on the screen here is some of the testing we've been doing across a multitude of different customers. So it's where we're taking code from those customers and the, the performance graphs are based on two different code bases, one around C++ and the second one around a Go-based application. Both of them were able to compile very quickly onto our platform. And both of them were using MPI to be able to scale these workloads over multiple nodes across our cluster. As we saw in the last video, Bamboo is not just a single one use server chassis, it's an innovative design where we have eight compute nodes and a, a vast amount of resource over those compute nodes. So we're seeing really eight servers in a one new platform. We're using MPI in this particular case to scale that application over our different uh, multiple nodes. So as we scale that performance, as we start to scale the applications, what we're seeing in the graph here is the total number of gigaflops we're seeing from eight cores up to 16, 32, 64, and 128 cores. So we're seeing how that performance scales and how we can move the application up as we add more and more resource. So the interesting point here is we see the ARM-based platform, the Bamboo platform, really outperforming per watt versus a traditional Intel. So the Intel we're looking at here from the customer's comparison was an Intel Broadwell-based solution. So because we're utilizing so uh, a much more power efficient platform, we're able to drive more performance per watt. But the key factor here is how linear we are, how linear that performance graph scales out. And the reason behind a lot of that is a simplified core architecture. 
So whereas in x86, we've been used to working with hyperthreading, we've been used to working with cores working in a turbo frequency versus a standard frequency. And some of those CPU packages where only a certain amount of cores can work at turbo frequency versus standard NA one time. That gives us a bit of a problem in terms of predicting what the application is gonna look like as it scales out. Are, am I hitting a physical core or am I hitting a hyperthreaded core? Am I hitting a turbo frequency at lower number of core counts versus it scaling and hitting a flat level of frequency? In a bamboo system with ARM-based technology, we don't have that problem. The cores are simplified. We sustain the frequency across all cores. So there is no turbo. We're really looking at this at sustained turbo. And that gives us a predictable performance graph. So overall, what does that give to a customer? Well, it allows them to have confidence when they scale their application, they can plan and design and scale their application with confidence and with that linear performance. So again, we're seeing a very, very good performance per watt uh, ratio that gives us a better footprint in terms of scaling our applications. And it gives us a much more, uh, let's say, denser footprint. And to give you just a, a snapshot of where we're at at the 128 core ratio here, in the Bamboo platform, we're at about 380 watts of power utilization. And that's when, as we can see from some of the lower graphic here, all of our CPUs are running at 100%. If we compare that to a single x86 1U server, that single server would generally be about six to 700 watts of power. So what we're essentially seeing here is 380 watts of, of utilization over our eight servers versus a traditional x86 at about six to 700 watts for a single server. Again, it just brings home some of that, some of our customer messaging about around a paradigm shift in terms of their applications and what we can do in a customer data center. So with that, everyone, I'd like to open up the floor here to questions so we can kind of round out the session here today. Yeah, Justin from Pivot9. Uh, I've got some questions just around translating that scale out performance into the actual workloads that people are using. So I, I understand that you've done some testing on a, on a particular application and mm. you're showing that. Uh, that that sort of general core count and and performance per watt, which is good to see. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking to test something, I'm I'm looking more to say how will this run my say MySQL or my Spark workload or something like that. Do you have information that you can share with customers that they can go and look at to try to get an idea of how I've got an application that runs MySQL? I have a pretty good idea of what my performance looks like today. Mm -hmm. and how I can convert that across to what it looks like in the bamboo world. Sure. So we have some information, but the reality is, just in that every application is unique and special in its own right. So especially some of the applications we were showing on the screen there, we have some of those customers who even have broken out elements of the application so they can run initial workload testing, get, a, get an idea of whether we're even in the ballpark before going to the full blown uh, application itself. And that's because they're used to this, this world where their application is quite specific, it's, it's in-house built. So they really need to test those applications. And that's where we work very closely with those customers to give them test platforms, to allow them to VPN into some of our test equipment, to work with our SE team, to compile that application, then run some of this workload testing and graph that out. Because that really then allows them to see from eight nodes up to, in my case, 16, 32, all the way scaling that application up, what performance do I get per node? What performance does that look like for four nodes? What does that performance look like for a full chassis of eight nodes in a bamboo system? And then how many of those bamboo systems do I need to reach a certain performance criteria? So mm -hmm. that's the way we generally do a lot of our workload testing. We do a lot of performance per watt, and that's very good for the session today. But obviously, there is also a factor of my, my application needs to perform at a certain level. And that's where we bring in the, the raw performance and looking at how many nodes do I need to achieve that performance from a bamboo solution. Yeah, and it looks like, and yeah, I think you had some detail on the slide there, that this is really designed for scale out applications. If, if I've got an Absolutely. application which is designed to be pretty monolithic, that's not going to suit. But as you point out, it's a lot not. of people are replatforming applications onto something like Kubernetes. It's absolutely true. Yeah, so as I'm, as I'm moving my applications into a more containerized scale out form factor, if I replatform, then I can also start looking at some of these alternate ways of actually running things in my data center. It's a great point, Justin. Yes, it's absolutely the way, the way we look at things. So there will be a mixed data center in the future. So whilst we believe that slowly over time, the data center will become fundamentally predominantly ARM, 
there's still going to be some monolithic applications which are very much sensitive to single core performance or single thread performance. And they're really not going to be suited to ARM. They're going to be suited to remain on x86. And over time, they will either be replaced by newer applications or they will just stay there stagnant. In the same way that we still see a lot of applications running on AS400, PowerPC, and things like that in the data center today. So we're not there to try and take over the entire data center. We're there for the majority of the data center, which is moving to the modernized way of working through containerization or through a clusterized application. Hi, this is Kurt Marco, Marco Insights. This might be another way of getting at James' question there, uh, or Justin's question, apologies. Um, most people that are familiar with ARM servers at all are probably familiar with the uh, AWS Graviton instances. So how, how might a node in Bamboo compare performance-wise, not talking about you know, other parameters, but to like a current generation Graviton instance you know, that somebody can spin up on AWS you know, today? I mean, have you done some performance comparisons? Uh, I believe Tony mentioned one of your customers is using uh, bamboo to kind of uh, repatriate um, graviton um, workloads. So maybe speak to to that comparison. Perfect. Good question, Kurt. So we have two different flavors of AWS Graviton out there today. We have AWS Graviton <clears> One. <throat> um, AWS Graviton Run is one is fundamentally running the same CPU and a very similar architecture to what we run at Bamboo. So when we look at that in terms of a performance comparison, um, outside of you know the, the general network latency, if we're going over over a wide area network, the the performance in terms of CPU memory and disk will be much the same from a CPU and memory perspective versus Graviton One. In terms of disk, we're running NVMe locally to the, to the nodes. So from it, in terms of IOPS, we will drastically outperform the AWS Graviton 1 instance. And the customer we were talking about earlier, um, which Tony mentioned, they're predominantly AWS Graviton 1 right now. So it's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship in terms of performance. They can bring those workloads on-premise and know that they will perform equally, if not slightly better, uh, from an I.O. perspective versus what they see with AWS Graviton 1. Now, AWS Gra Graviton 2 is a slightly different CPU architecture. It's a slightly downscaled version of uh, Neoverse N1, so it's a slightly lower frequency. So in that case, that, uh, what we've seen is that will perform at around about 30-40% faster CPU core to CPU core than what we see on a, uh, a bamboo, so bamboo instance. Now, we have to also then take the final matter into, into consideration, which is then the cost of that. So whilst it might be 40% uh, higher performance, we'll find it will be somewhere in the region of around a 6x cost increase to be running that workload in AWS Graviton 1 or Graviton, no, Graviton 2, sorry. If we look at Graviton 1, it's about a 4x cost in increase uh, versus a Bamboo instance. So that's exactly why that customer is looking to bring these AWS Graviton instances back out to the edge, back out to their own premise, because the cost differential is so great in terms of the uh, cost of AWS versus running those on a Bamboo system and running them a four times cost reduction on premise. And just if I might add just one point to that as well, that uh, I mentioned, we, we spoke about in the previous video, that um, the, uh, this first server from Bamboo is a simple to buy, simple to try, simple to install, test the workloads. You know, we, we are well aware that there are faster processes out there and we are look, we're looking at various options right now. So um, just watch this space over the next few months and uh, maybe we'll have a product that uh, takes away that 40% uh, performance increase as well. Indeed. Uh, Stephen Foskett here from Gestalt IT. I, I also host the Utilizing AI podcast, and I'm really curious if there are any optimizations in the Bamboo system to accelerate machine learning applications, since that's one of the applications you mentioned. So in the current generation of Bamboo systems, there's no major physical or, let's say, architectural uh, advantages in terms of being able to accelerate those AI and ML workloads. The one element we do have and we can bring into the equation for optimizing certain areas is to utilize the ARM performance libraries in the ARM uh, compiler. So just like you get with an Intel x86, where we can use the Intel compiler to really start to tweak specific elements for our application, we have a very similar thing for ARM uh, with the compiler and performance libraries there. But in terms of, of the physical architecture, in terms of utilizing things like uh, T uh, uh, 
uh, TPUs or DPUs, none of that is in the, the platform today, but it is something we're looking at uh, further downstream for the future. So in terms of a lot of our customers, they're looking at how some of those workloads may be utilized on ARM64 today, and then looking at our uh, roadmap to see how they then can, can then accelerate some of those, those workloads with our next generation platforms. Hey, Danny Cherry from Danny Cherry and Associates Consulting. Um, I just had a question about the, the graph that you showed in the slide deck. Um, when that graph was done, was the application recompiled with the normal performance counters or the, you know, the normal compiler, or is it compiled with that ARM specific performance uh, compiler that you were talking about? So in both of those applications, we ran just standard GCC compilers. So there was nothing optimized there. It was just a standard com compilation. Again, it was running over a Go application and a secondary application, which was running on C, C++. So uh, MPI and the applications them themselves were both compiled with standard GCC. So there was probably a little bit more we could have got out there if we spent a bit more time with that application. But we were pretty happy with those results out the box. So we, we stopped there. There are other Hi. applications and other customers where we do go that, that extra step uh, with our SE teams and really start to optimize but that's what you got on the screen there, Danny. Great question. All right, All right cool. Yeah, so that, that makes it really easy then. So if, to get that little bit extra oomph, look at look at spending a little more time with the software, a little more time recompiling it with that performance benchmark, and then, then you should get even more oomph out of the system. Absolutely. I mean, awesome. one, of the, one of the things that we were genuinely concerned about was, was the ecosystem. What, you know, are we going to recompile, be able to recompile, especially customer developed applications across the bamboo? And as James said in his presentation, there isn't one instance right now that we haven't been able to do it. So I'd like to thank you all very, very much for your time. Um, if there's any other interest, please visit our website, bamboosystems.io, and uh, hope everybody has a great, great day. Thank you so much.